Hi everybody, so here is the remainder of what we didn't get to touch on today in section 1.2, um, just to finish it off. So we are going to be talking about the concept of continuity. Oops, if I can spell it, continuity. There we go. So first we're going to define what it means for a function to be continuous. So we say a function f is continuous at x equals a if the following criteria are met. So if if f of a exists, okay, so if the function value actually exists, if the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, and if that limit and that function value are equal to each other. Okay, so these are the three qualifications that must be satisfied for a function to be continuous. Now when you think of a function being continuous visually, um, it really just comes down to the idea of uh, if I put my pencil down to draw the function and never have to pick it up again. That's what it means for a function to be continuous. So like in previous examples we saw graphs that had holes in them like that. Um, that's not continuous, right, because there's a bit of a, a gap there. Um, we also saw graphs that looked kind of like that. That's what we call a jump, right? If we have asymptotes, something like like this, right, that would not be continuous. Um, because then we have a break in the graph. So all three of these conditions must be satisfied for a function to be continuous. Um, just an additional note, uh, if a function is not continuous at x equals a, Uh, we say it is discontinuous or has a discontinuity. Okay, so a continuous function, the function value must exist, the limit must exist, and those must be equal to each other, right? So in other words, as I'm heading towards the value, the limit has to be the same, and the function actually has to be there. Okay? That's what it means for it to be continuous. And then um, an additional just note here, um, a function is continuous, because we talked about a function being continuous at a point. We say a function is continuous on an open interval, if it is continuous at every point on that interval. Which sounds sounds kind of like, well, no, duh. If it's continuous at every point along the way, then it's continuous across the whole thing. Um, so, But that's going to be a very useful property for us when dealing with continuity. So let's look at an example. So the question is, is the function f of x equals uh, x squared minus 5 continuous at x equals 3? That's the question. 
Okay, so in order to check for continuity, we check the three conditions. So let's check f of 3. That's going to be 3 squared minus 5, which is 9 minus 5, which is 4. It exists. So that's good. That's one step there. Limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 5. Well, because this function is eligible, right, it's rational, um, we can just di use direct substitution. Just plug in the 3, and again, that gives us 3 squared minus 5, which is 4. So the limit also exists, and the limit and the function value both equal 4. So they are equal to each other which means it is continuous at x equals 3. Okay, and we could do that for, for any point. Um, there's one important property that's really going to help when doing uh, continuity examples over intervals. So on this one, Right, we could have done this same process for any point along that parabola, and it would have given us um, continuity. Um, and the reason for that is because polynomials are continuous everywhere. And rational functions are continuous everywhere on their domains. So polynomials, because a polynomial's domain is all real numbers, it's, it exists everywhere, so a polynomial is continuous everywhere. A rational function is continuous everywhere on its domain, um, because we saw like in the previous examples, sometimes there's like a hole in the graph, um, but everywhere except that hole, there would be continuous function. Okay, so um, those are going to be really useful because then we don't have to check literally every single point. We can just say, well, we know it's continuous because it is this type of function. Okay, so let's look at an example that will utilize this. So where is the function g of x, which is a piecewise function, which is 1 half x plus 3 if x is less than negative 2, and it's x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Where is this function continuous? All right, so this question really has to get split up into three components because we want to find out what happens less than negative 2. Is this function going to be continuous for every value less than negative 2? Similarly, for the second piece, is that function continuous for everything bigger than negative 2? And then, kind of the important part of the question, what happens at negative 2, where these two functions meet? Do they actually meet up? And then we have a function that's continuous, right? Do they go something like, like this at the point, and they meet? Or does it do something like this, and they, and they don't meet each other? In which case, it would be discontinuous. So that's the question. So, let's start off, so for x less than negative 2, g is continuous because that function 
uh, in this case that's the one half x plus three is a polynomial which is continuous everywhere Nope, can't get it all to fit on one line. Oh, well. So when x is less than negative 2, the function, right, 1 half x plus 3 is a polynomial, which means that it's continuous everywhere. So it's continuous everywhere less than negative 2. For x greater than negative 2, g is once again continuous. It's basically the exact same argument. g is continuous because that function, the x minus 1, is a polynomial, which is continuous everywhere. Okay, so that function x minus 1 is also continuous everywhere. Okay, so we know that the function is continuous for everything less than negative 2 and is continuous for everything greater than negative 2. The question is, what happens at two, negative 2? So when x equals negative 2, now is when we need to check those properties. So let's find g of negative 2. So the question now is which function do we use to find g of negative 2? Well, it's going to be the one where the x equals negative 2. So we're going to use this second one here. So we have negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, which exists, of course. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I put plus 1 instead of minus 1. That's minus 1, which means that is negative 3. There we go. Then, we need to look at the limit. Okay, so in this case, because it's a piecewise, we have one function from the left, a different one from the right. We are going to need to use the left-hand and right-hand limits separately. So we are going to take the limit approaching negative 2 from the left, and the limit approaching negative 2 from the right. From the left, we're on the first function. So that's the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of 1 half x plus 3, which is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. And from the right, we're on the other function. So we're on the x minus 1, negative 2, oops, I did it again, minus 1 is negative 3. Notice the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit do not match. This function does not approach the same value coming from the left as it does from the right. Okay, from the left, it's coming towards 2. From the right, it's coming towards negative 3. What this tells us is the limit, the entire limit of the function does not exist. And since the limit does not exist, the function cannot be continuous at negative 2. So thus, discontinuous at x equals negative 2. So let's go back and make sure we've answered the question. Where is the function continuous? Well, we saw in these three parts the function is continuous everywhere except at negative 2. So, therefore, the function is continuous everywhere except at x equals negative 2.